Good morning, everyone. It is Saturday morning. It's actually 11 o'clock in the morning. And I just now got out of the shower and I've had pancakes for breakfast. My fasting is over um, since 11 o'clock. So I could eat and um, I wanted to kind of um, go over with you guys what I have been doing this morning. Um, this morning, God has really been speaking to me. I have been watching all night last night and um, all of this morning, uh, been watching many, 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 many uh, single mom videos and also Christian um, just guidance on um, from pastors on what a Christian woman should be, um, how they should handle themselves, and um, what to do in your marriage if your spouse files for divorce and it's something that you think is unbiblical that they have done. How do you react? Um, I have had um, my care group at church ask me if I want to start dating or if I'm interested in dating. Um, and, you know, I have friends who are going to start helping me date. Um, I just don't feel like it's right. Um, God, I've been praying about it, you guys. I really, really have been praying about it. And um, God is saying um, not to do it. Um, and so I started watching all those single mom videos <laughs> to figure out, you know, okay, so if I'm not going to get married, my husband doesn't want me, and I'm going to follow God's will, what does that mean for me? What do I do with this this life that God has given to me? Um, I know I need to pray. I know I need to keep praying. Um, you know, I, I do know that. Um, and just pray for restoration or pray for healing or pray that my husband will marry his girlfriend or something to break this covenant that I am trying to keep with my God and with my ex-husband. Um... So here's my thoughts. <laughs> um, God had commanded me to love my spouse. God has commanded me to remain in my marriage. Um, even though my husband is um, doing whatever he wants to do and he's filed for divorce. Um, and God has really shown me what is wrong with that decision. Um, and what is wrong, especially for my spouse who um, claimed to be a Christian and what is wrong with um, the marriage that I've done and um, what I need to be doing as far as me and my children. God's really kind of laid it on my heart on how to move forward. Um, God has not made a way of me moving forward yet. Um, and that is what I am waiting on. It is not the desire to move forward because I do have the desire. Um, whether it is back with my spouse who um, accepts Christ or it's with another Christian man. I know that God has given me the desire to be with a Christian husband and to have a Christian um, faith and family and marriage. And um, so, you know, as I'm waiting for God to give me that answer on who that is or um, how to find that in my life, um, you know, God's really having me work on me. And um, it's funny that I say that because um, I used to sing that song when I was um, five years old with my dad in church. And it was something that my husband, he just seemed like he was really attracted to me because um, I, of my Christian faith. And because of me even singing that song um, to him once, he said, I've never heard that. Um, He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and the stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be. He's still working on me. I just love that song um, because God's still working on me. Um, if you guys hear um, banging, my neighbor's working outside on something. Um, 
So um, he wasn't beating a drum to my song, just in case you heard that. <laughs> I'm like, I crack myself up sometimes. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, I've been doing that all week at work. Uh, people are just like, oh, she's flipped out. She's lost her mind because she's making herself laugh. Um, but yeah, I just got out of the shower and um, had my breakfast. And as I was sitting here eating my pancakes, um, I was reading um, in Proverbs uh, 31, Proverbs 31, wife, because I want to know more of what God is expecting of me, just as a woman um, in general. And... So, um, I just found this very interesting how this begins. I was married to an ex-alcoholic. So, listen up. Sayings of King Limerel. I'm not sure who that is, but he was a king. Um, an inspired utterance his mother taught him. So, this came from his mother. Um, I don't know if she was a single mother. Um... I don't know if it says um, who this person is um, in detail. So, listen, my son. Listen, son of my womb. Listen, my son, the answer to my prayers. Do not spend your strength on women, your vigor on those who ruin kings. It is not for kings, Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, not for rulers to crave beer, lest they drink and forget what has been decreed, and deprived of all oppression of their rights. Let beer be for those who are perishing, wine for those who are in anguish. Let them drink and forget their poverty, and remember their misery no more. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the right of all those who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and the needy. So weird. Why does it say this? God is saying, um, to me here, alcoholics, let those who drink beer, let them drink to forget. Um, that they're falling away. They don't even know because they're, they're covering it up. That's what drinking does. It numbs you, helps you forget. Um, He says, don't spend your strength on women. For women ruin kings. I'm not understanding what that means, you guys. It's not for kings to drink. I think as a king, um, we are kings and queens um, in Christ. Um, he gives us a crown. He gives us the authority to um, speak in his name. Um, this is just another passage to me to say, um, hey, Christian, you should not be drinking. You should not even have a, um, a problem with this because you um, are deprived of all the oppressed of their rights and um, you're forgetful. And um, speak up for those who cannot speak up for themselves. Um, you know, those who um, can't remember what they say. Um, I could tell you, uh, I could tell when my husband was drinking um, because he couldn't remember what he, what he just said or what he wrote, what he told me. And um, he acted like he was confused. I never said that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> um, you know, I'm just not really understanding who this person is, this king, and why does it say this? But right after this verse, it says, the epilogue 
of the wife of noble character. So let's keep reading and see if it will answer um, who King Lemuel is. A wife of a noble character who can find. She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. <clears throat> she, should, she selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like a merchant ship, bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets out her vigorous work. Her arms are strong for her task. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household. All of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate, where he takes a seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with shashes. She is clothed in strength and dignity. She can, come, she can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and fearful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive, deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor for her in all that her hands have done, and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. And that is it. It goes straight into Ecclesiastics after that, you guys. Um, let me see if my notes will tell me. Um, now, Proverbs 30th talks about sayings of Agar. Um, you guys, I don't know. I am doing Bible study right now in Proverbs, but we're only on chapter three. So we're, we got a long ways to go. Um, Alexa, who is King Lemuel? No. So King Lemuel is talking about what his mother had said. So I think when he, it's talking about what he is saying is a noble life, he's talking about what his mom has told him. His mom has told him growing up, that um, if you are going to be a good king, do not drink beer. Um, do not be forgetful. Do not um, forget where you came from. And, and speak up uh, fairly for those poor and in needy. And and um, this is what you look for in your wife. And um, this is one of the things that, you know, um, I just really have a goal in my life. Um, I really feel like God has called every woman to be this. And um, I'm going to go back through it real quick. Um, she's far more worthy than rubies. It's the inside um, that God is looking at in every woman. Um, and she's um, got that noble character um, in loving Christ that there's no value on her. Um, Nobody could ever pay enough money to get this. Um, her husband is in full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. 
So, um, he doesn't feel valuable because of her and um, her love for Christ. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. And it's so weird that it says all the days because that means when you're talking about husband and wife, you are to be married always until the day you die. I just now caught that. All the days of her life. Um, she brings her husband good and not harm. Wow. So once I said I do, I'm to love my husband and do him good, not harm, all the days of my life. I'm not to remarry, you guys. This is something I've been struggling with this um, last couple days. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She's like a merchant ship, bringing her food from afar. So she gathers her food. She likes to shop for her family. She um, considers a field and buys it. I did that. I bought some property, you guys. And um, I did get that in my divorce. That's my property. And I paid cash for it. And I now have a camper on it. I've paid cash for that. I've paid cash for... Um, my property and my land and my goal is to retire out there my goal is um, it was to retire out there when we bought it as a husband and wife um, but my husband didn't pay any money for this land it was me and um, God laid it on my heart a couple years ago um, to buy this property to pay cash for it um, he says, go out there and prep the land, um, prepare for what's to come. And I think when I had that discernment in my heart to purchase this land, and I went to my husband and I said, hey, I want to buy this land. Initially, it was for us to um, have a place to go to if the world got really bad. Um, it was a place that we could just take our kids camping at, you know. And just have a getaway place so we could unite together as a family. I had a really strong desire to want to do this with my spouse. Um, this was something that God says, buy this property, bring him to it, and um, show him your vision for this property. And I did. And um, that vision has not changed. You guys, that vision has not changed just because my spouse filed for divorce. I would love to um, make a homestead out there. I can't have goats and sheep and all that out there because of HOA laws. But um, it is a place that I want to, um, to work. And I want to... Um, be very thankful that God has given me the discernment I needed to show my husband this property, um, that he agreed to buy it, buy it um, that I could spend my money and buy it. Um, so she, she sets out her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her task. You know, this last summer as a single mom, I went out to my property, you guys, and I worked the land with my boys. Um, it was kind of fun. Being able to unite with my children and show them some kind of worth ethic. Um, it's not just about playing video games, you know, all the time. I wanted their help to go out there and work this property. And we did. We cut down trees and we um, weeded it a lot. Um, I still have huge trees. I bought a chainsaw and um, my, tra my chainsaw is not big enough to cut down these trees. I'm going to have to get a professional out there this summer. To cut down these trees and um i do plan on using the tree bark um and the wood chips to put the wood chips down to make a path um and just use it on my land make it very pretty in her hands she holds the staff and grasps the spindle with her fingers she opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy um, that is something God has really laid on my heart. 
lately, um, especially for single mothers. And uh, I am working on that. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of her children are clothed in scarlet. It's the middle of winter, you guys. And even though it's not snowing today, it did snow the other day. Um, just two days ago, it was snowing here in Kansas City. And, um, you know, a lot of people were fearful. Um, I'm not fearful of the snow. I love the snow. Um, I love all the seasons that God has given to us. Um, I'm looking forward to springtime coming. Um, and uh, is talking about her home. She loves to make coverings for her bed. Um, and she wants to uh, take care of her home. And I am doing that even in my apartment. I am not decorating as much as I did when I had my house. Um, it's not as um, pretty as it was because it's not a home. It's an apartment. But, um, you know, as I am building out on my property, I'm turning it into a home. Um, my camper is going to be um, part of me um, living out there uh, eventually. It is not going to be my home, my camper, but it is going to be part of um, making it available for me to build out there the way I would like to. It's going to give me a roof over my head until um, I can come up with the money to um, build. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. So this is one thing I'm really struggling with. Um, I want to do these devotionals with you guys, but I do not have the wisdom. I do not have the um, faithful instruction on my tongue. Sometimes I blah, 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 and I go um, from one subject to another subject. And it's part of the way I am thinking because I am wanting to just witness so much to you guys and share my my journey and my experience as a single mom uh, but it says she watches over the affairs of her household and she does not eat the bread of the idleness this is something that is very evident in my life right now I do not want to have any other idols other than God in my life um, that's including my ex-spouse even though I think he's done wrong I don't want to idle him. I don't want to be jealous of him and the decisions and life he's chosen, having his girlfriend live with him. I don't want to um, have evilness brought into my home. I don't want um, any affairs um, of sin or Satan to be in our household. So I am praying over my children, my apartment, uh, my decisions, um, I'm asking for clarity and discernment. I'm asking God for patience as I wait. Um, and I am asking God to um, heal my hardened heart um, of pain and anguish and um, depression and high anxiety. It says her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also praises her. So I'm having a hard time with this verse. Um, because I feel like I have neglected my children through my divorce. I have felt like lately I am not doing God's will as far as concentrating on praying with my children, speaking of God in front of my children, um, and I cannot raise the children in a Christian home like I want to um, because of my divorce. Um, I feel like they look at me like, why can't you um, keep your husband? Um, both of my children have said to me that they feel like this is not my fault. Um, there was nothing I could do. But at the same time, why can't mom be married? And this is something I'm struggling with. Why can't I be married? Why can I not find the godly man? Um, I believed my husband that I married was a Christian. I believed he was a godly man. And if he was a godly man, we would not be divorced. And um, 
So when it says her husband also praises her, I, I didn't have that. My husband has not seen a wife of noble character in me. My children have, but not my spouse. And I'm having a really hard time trying to figure this one out. Many women do uh, noble things, but you surpass them all. Um, so there's a lot of noble women out there. Um, but it's the Christian uh, inside you. It's the Holy Spirit living inside you that sets you apart from that non-believer uh, woman. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. And I think that's it, you guys. I fear God so much. I don't want to disappoint my Heavenly Father. I want Him to be proud of me. I want Him to say, you are a good and faithful servant. I want to praise His name in everything I do. Even when it comes to raising my children in a Christian education. I want God's glory to be praised in my children. I want others to see Christ living in my kids. I want... My children to be able to see God in our educational system. And I want him, my children to see the Lord being praised throughout me and my decisions and my faith and, and my family. Okay, I just got an unexpected phone call from my son um, who's nine and he's staying the night at his cousin's house. So um, I don't remember what I was saying. But her children arise and call her blessed, and her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive, and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done, and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. So I do know that when I get to that city gate in heaven, God is going to be very um, pleased with me. As long as I follow this noble character um, in my life as a Proverbs 31 woman. Um, you know, I don't know what the future holds. Um, <clears throat> but I really do feel like through my divorce, God has really laid it on my heart. I am clothed with strength and dignity. And I can laugh at the days that are to come. Because, <laughs> you guys... God's with me. He's with me through everything. Um, he doesn't make mistakes. You know, I am having discernment on what I am supposed to do as a Christian, as a woman, as a mother, as a head of a household, um, the spiritual um, part of just fighting for what's right uh, when it comes to my children and when it comes to myself. And, um, you know, that's all I want to do is please God. And, um, you know, it's amazing that God says, this is how you should be as a woman. You should have noble character. And um, you should have nothing else in your life that is priority over the word of God. And so God has really, in my divorce, has Got me. I am in scripture. You guys, I am reading all of it. God's telling me time is short. We don't have a whole lot of time left. And um, he's bringing me back to him. And he's saying, be a good and faithful servant and, and follow me. And do as I command you to do. And um, I've been through counseling, through my divorce and one thing the counselor is um, advising me is get in God's word and listen to his instruction. Um, I don't know why I just pulled this up. <laughs> I was just flipping my Bible and I ended up in Proverbs 9. Um, no, it was actually 8 and it's verse 32. Now then, my child, my children, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Listen to my instruction and be wise and do not disregard it. Blessed are those who listen to me watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorway. And for those who find me in fine life and receive favor from the Lord, but those, but those who fail to find me harm themselves. 
All who hate me love death. You guys, in a marriage, it is until death do you part. Marriage is death. You are no longer single. You died to your old self. You are now not two flesh, but one. God says, listen to my instruction. Watching daily for him. Time's running out. And I need to remain faithful in my marriage to God, to my ex-spouse. I need to be a noble wife, mother, woman. I need to seek God in all of his ways. Have discernment. Know what's right. Do God's will and get into his word. You guys, that's what I've learned this morning is how important it is. And the one thing about Proverbs is it's talking about wisdom, having wisdom. And I just think it's, I feel so blessed that my care group, um, even though the pastor of the church is going into Daniel and doing Bible prophecy, uh, the care groups decided to stick with Proverbs. And I want to uh, be so thankful that they are talking about wisdom. And I need to tell the leader um, of my care group, thank you for staying, sticking with Proverbs. Because, um, you know, for wisdom, your days will be many and your years will be added to your life. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Where do you get that knowledge from? You get it from... You get that knowledge from the Word of God. The Bible. This is wisdom. You know, if you are a single woman, your spouse has left you. And you're like, what do I do? What do I do? How am I going to... Feed my children. How am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to live a life? I'm never going to find a man, a Christian man in my life. God gives you the answers right here <laughs> in his holy word. Most of this is in red. <laughs> Jesus' words. He says, have wisdom and knowledge of what I'm telling you. Obey my word. Don't Do not disregard it. Blessed are those who listen to me. I have discernment. So, um, I want to thank you guys for watching. I am hoping, I am encouraging someone out there. I, I don't know. I'm going through, I want, I want to say I'm going through hell right now, you guys. I seriously feel like it. Um, because I loved my husband so much. I respected him as a spiritual leader of our family. An, a Christian man, for him to fall away, not follow, not follow God's word, for him to um, not respect me, not love me, not want me in his life, and um, to file for a divorce. It was unexpected. It was unwanted. I didn't know what was going on. I still don't know to this day why I'm divorced, you guys, um, except for it's what my husband wanted. That's all I know. And I need, <clears throat> I need to seek wisdom on how I handle um, things like when he wants to file a motion against me, um, trying to divide our family, and um, trying to make me um, waver my faith. Honestly, that's what it is. It's just Satan trying to attack me by... Um, taking everything away that is important in my life. My husband was important to me in my life. My family unit was the most important thing I had in my life. My spouse, my children. And Satan's trying to rip that away from me. He hates marriages. Satan hates Christians. God says you need to have wisdom. How do you fight this battle? You're going through a struggle. You're going through a trial. You're going through a battle. How do you fight this battle? It's with this God, God's word right here. That's how you fight this battle. Pray. Seek him. 
Have wisdom. Be noble. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. Think of these things. If you're thinking of these things, you're not negative. If you're thinking of these things, you're not depressed. You don't have anxiety because you pray, you give it to God. Everything you do. Pray for anything, and if you have faith, you will receive it. Matthew 21, 22. If I pray for my marriage to be restored, I will receive it. If I pray for knowledge and wisdom, I'll receive it. If I pray that my bills will be paid, I will have it, and God will bless me with it. If I pray for um, God to show me his will, he will show me if he wants me to date other people and, um, you know, move forward. He'll, he'll show me what to do. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to have high anxiety about it. You guys, God is so good. He gives us the answers. And, um, he says, seek me and you shall find me. And, uh, I hope this encourages you guys. Have a blessed, blessed day. Love you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.